So we're continuing on with part three of uh, body mechanics for massage application. And we've got our basic table set up here that we demonstrated in a previous video to try to minimize the use of a face cradle with our indication of using masks. And Luke's going to come in yep. and he is going to get himself positioned. Now, Luke, this is not going to be hard for you to get on. But what if you were a little old lady? I, exactly. Um, an easy thing to go and buy, and I used it in practice for years, is just one of those um, athletic steps. Um, usually they can be elevated or shortened to about, oh, six feet to maybe a foot in height. They'll have a rubber mat that's attached mm -hmm. so that there's a grip for people. Um, you want one that's a good at least two feet long by a foot wide. What that's going to allow for is obviously the client to be able to step up and get onto the table. Right. But it's also, if, when we're able to actually show this, it can be a tool for the massage therapist that's as well. That's right. So it stores well underneath. So I strongly advise garage sales, Amazon, whatever, um, go find yourself one of those athletic steps. And that's the ones that you use for stepper exercise. Yes, yeah. Yep, Got exactly. it. Yep. So by yay, by yay. Yep. All right. So um, now we're just going to use Luke as a body double here. So and from the prior video from part two, we have actually raised this table to an optimal height for her. Now she's five seven. I'm about six foot, and you can see this is this table is uh, almost to its maximal height already. So you, it's good. I just am going to reinforce that. It's surprising to people how high they how much they can bring the table up and how much easier it's going to make. You, even though you're not astronomically taller. No, but this isn't a bad height for you either. No, but as we indicated for a male, it's I, all right. I carry my center of gravity higher. This doesn't necessarily mean that for various body types, that won't always be the case. But males, since we have a little bit more weight distribution in muscle mass in the shoulders, um, can get away with. This. Now, I also, but even at this height, I have to actually um, sacrifice a little bit more of a, a wider stance. And, yeah, you spread your legs much further apart so, and bend over. So, not optimal, but sometimes for a taller male, they may have to learn to adapt to the, the maximal height of the table. Well, and obviously, the adjustable hydraulic type tables would be the best. And, uh, but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to find a happy medium. But a higher table, like was previously mentioned, doesn't mean you don't use your hands. You still can use your hands. You just pick and choose when you do. And if you can, I, this, and one of the ongoing themes of all these videos is gonna be if we are working, if I can use my forearm, I do. It saves my hands. I save my hands for other areas soft nuances or being able to get into target zones. But if I can use my form, that's my first go-to. So that's the key focus. All right, All right let's get, get you on here. Right, here so we're going to let's review our bolstering here. Um, this is positioned so that we have more of a flat or neutral back. This takes the pressure uh, off of the uh, low back just a little bit as well. If the person is tall enough and their feet comfortably hang over the edge of the table, this bolster isn't necessarily uh, needed. That, that or they can go off the side yeah. of the table like that. All right, and then up you come. This bolster right here, this could be a pillow as well, is lifting the chest. So there's an area here. And the client can then adjust it to wherever they need. And if a, a, a woman is a little bit uh, larger breasted, that gives a little space in there as well. Now, a lot of the tables I think are a little too wide and it makes us reach for our client. So it's okay to ask your client, can you scooch closer to the edge of the table here for me? You know, that, that's perfectly fine to do and engage the client. Um, so I'm gonna, show you a couple of setups here now uh, using just that basic formula of setup and where we make our contact with the client 
and the idea of the excursion. So again, um, I'm also going to introduce the ideas of hills and valleys here. And you want to lean up a hill and you want to avoid <laughs> massaging in a valley as much as possible. So as I identify, I've got slopes here and I have slopes here and I have slopes here. So I'm going to reposition my body as I go through this. To reinforce that, uh, might be clear to indicate that it's pushing uphill, since that gives you something to push against. That's right. You want to be uphill, you don't want to be going downhill. Downhill, <laughs> you slip and lose control, but uphill, the object is pushing back against you. And, very good clarification, and you can go ahead and slip or glide down a hill as long as you're not reaching. Uh, but you don't want to apply any pressure at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get my toes, belly button, and nose lined up. I'm going to identify where I want to land, which is right here on the side of the back. Um, I have the client close enough to me. Back foot is behind. Front foot is just about, my knee is, is just about between where I'm going to land uh, and my back foot. So point A, point B, and then point C back here. So, and then I'm just going to lean. And if you just let your body weight drop forward with that, you're going to be achieving about a moderate pressure. And that's another video. So I'm going to start here and make contact. And I'm going in this direction, not like this. I'm going diagonally. Start at the bottom of the hill. And then my excursion is going to be what my knee will allow as I move forward. Then I'm going to push myself back, position, and do that again. Usually we're three strokes, three pressure levels. Now, I want to start my stroke there, so I'm just going to step, step, and there I go to the top of that hill. Push myself back. If I want to go this way, up this hill, I'm going to turn around. And I get myself positioned. Notice that the adjustments I make happen with my feet. I put my arm where I want it. And then I adjust my comfort by moving my feet. Lean. Push with my back foot and forward. Front foot brings me back. Lean. Get your pressure. And forward. But is your shoulder changing position? No, my shoulder stays. So here's what people want to do. They'll go... They just slide their arm. So... If I stand up, look at where my arm is. It's absolutely in that red zone on the initial picture that Luke was showing you in the book. But if I keep my arm fixed, and then I stand up, see my shoulder stayed right in the very same spot. So I want to go up this slope. Find where I want my contact to be. And, and then I come around again, find where I want my contact to be. And, you know, I know, I know that when you look at massage videos and you see things on TV, you see long sweeping strokes like this and, and I don't do those and the reason why I don't do those is because it's hard on me and if I don't take care of me
that I'm not going to be able to take care of clients. Now here's an arm. There it is. And it's lower. So this is going to be more conducive for me to use my palm of my hand. Same idea, but the palm of my hand. So you need to make good decisions. Because if I use my forearm, you see I'm all bent over here again. And I want to avoid that bend. And I certainly don't want to, uh, you know, curl over like this. So it makes more sense now for me to apply the method using my hand. Position, lean into it, foot, weight to the back to it. Use that to push you forward. If you feel like you're starting to bend over or your arm slides too much, it's time to either push yourself back to your original position or to take a step. What do you think, Luke? Perfect. And there's a little bit more nuance with sideline position, but that'll be in another clip. Exactly. I'm going to reinforce one additional idea. I'm probably looking a little... <laughs> <laughs> But if you watch where she was applying pressure, this idea of the hill, okay? If she's picking where to work, she's going to pick and looking for a place that's uphill, which allows, it's going to push back against her. So, it's picking that versus if I were doing this, it's choosing not to do this. Correct. So, if I have areas in the body to work, I would work here on this hill, and then I would take a step and work along this hill. Taking these steps to get ourselves in a better position to make contact with the body. Look for these hills and pay attention to how far you've gone and then move the whole your whole body. Take that step. You, you know, and you've done this before too, Luke, where you, you know, this is our this is the world we live in. Yeah, it looks a little robotic. <laughs> yep.